In this episode of Local Brew, I'm grabbing a beer with the guys behind the popular and colorful main podcast, Drinkin' Thinkin'. This is episode number 41 of Drinkin' Thinkin', and this week we are joined by the host of Local Brew, Matt Delamater. Then I'm heading into the woods of Maine to visit one of the funkiest breweries around, Funky Bow Brewing Company, where I'll help co-founder and brewmaster Abraham Lorraine brew a batch of beer. What am I pouring in here? So this is a mixture, or it just might be pale malt. Um, that's the base malt for the beer. And I'll check out their 23-acre farm, where they grow salad greens in the dead of winter. Can I try some of this? Oh yeah, munch it hard. <laughs> munch it hard. After that, I'm coming to Growler Night at the brewery to eat delicious barbecue and sample some of Funky Bo's best beers with the locals. Then I'm heading to a bar that serves tasty organic plates alongside delicious Funky Bo beers, the Little Tap House in Portland. It's just about really fresh food and also that relationship with the craft beer industry, which is amazing. Yep, it's all about drinking craft beer in the woods of Maine on this episode of Local Brew. The craft beer scene in the United States is exploding with over 1,900 breweries. States like Maine, Colorado, Washington, and California are leading the way in this revolution. I'm Matt Delamater, and I love beer. When I travel, I head to out-of-the-way breweries and bars to drink the beer that locals drink with the locals themselves. The beer I find outstanding. And the people, one of a kind. This is Local Brew. Local Brew is sponsored by the Main Brew Bus, the official ride of Local Brew, driving you to drink local since 2012. Brewtees.com, setting the bar in craft beer apparel since 1990, right here in Portland, Maine. Outliers Eatery. Serving fine craft beer and fresh locally sourced dishes daily on the outskirts of Portland's West End. This week on Local Brew, I'm in the woods of Lyman, Maine, which is where you'll find one of Maine's most unique breweries, Funky Bow Brewing. Founded in 2013 by a father and his son, Paul and Abraham Lorraine, who were estranged for seven years before reconciling their differences over a pint of beer. Shortly after that, Paul gave Abraham a home brew kit as a gift, which was the beginning of Funky Bow Brewing. Two years later, they're producing some of Maine's most balanced microbrews in a 560-square-foot garage-turned-brewery. Along with the help of head brewer Donovan Lane, Funky Bow brews up some outstanding beers right here in the woods of Maine. But they're not the only beer lovers living in the woods. We're heading up the coast to Walpole, Maine, where three friends from college get together every week to record their popular podcast about Maine craft beer, Drinkin' Thinkin'. This is episode number 41 of Drinkin' Thinkin'. Since 2009, friends Ben Lazat, Ryan Poland and Tony C. had been drinking, reviewing, and enjoying craft beer while talking trash and sharing their insights on life. I never rocked the stretch. <laughs> just <laughs> the and beer. They cover topics ranging from newly released movies and 90s sitcoms to the highly anticipated brewer review that is featured in every episode. They do all of this from the living room of Ryan's house in the woods of coastal Maine. This week, the guys are having me as a guest on their podcast. I brought a growler of Funky Bow's So Folk and Hoppy IPA, which they will review during the brew review segment. But first, they kick things off with an interview with me. Well, uh, well guys, thank you for having me out of your house. I'm pumped yeah. to do this, and cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Let's right. uh, go do it. Let's do it. So I guess we should start the show off. Local brew, what's it all about? Local brew, man. You know, it's it's uh, in Maine and New England specifically, we are blessed with like a bazillion great beer companies and so we just really wanted to kind of explore that world a bit you know kind of like what you guys are doing and go and tell those stories you know this is this brewery let's go check them out and then also team up with a local establishment a pub a bar that might be serving that local beer and worst case scenario if no one watched it i got to drink beer exactly (laughs) it's win-win for you unfortunately we don't have time to share the whole podcast but if you want to hear it in full check out episode number 41 on their website Next up, we jump into the brew review. All right, so here we go. Porn for the brew review. Ooh, that sounds pretty fucking fresh. Oh, we're drinking a funky bow. So fucking good. <laughs> so <laughs> soaking, so fucking good. So fucking good. Before the brew review begins, they take photos of the beer for their website. One of those will work. And then it's right into the review. All right, let's go drink it. These guys take the brew review very seriously. They each have a special glass with their name on it, which is used exclusively for the review, and no one is allowed to sample the beer before the review starts. All right, cheers, Cheers. everybody. Do I drink it now? Okay, so go for it. Here we go, cheers. (laughs) So nervous? Ooh, that's good. That's a hoppy beer. That is really hoppy. After they each sample the beer, they talk about its qualities and what they like or dislike about it before giving it a rating between 1 and 12. 
The higher the number, the better the beer. So, uh, Ryan, what do you think? I am going to give this an 11. No way. I, I, no way. I ain't kidding. 11 out of 12. Yeah, right I really like these. You know what? For the first beer that I'm trying from these guys and it being so good, I think it, it rates right up there. 11. Yeah, 11 too. I mean, same reasonings. It's hoppy. It's got body. It's got an alcohol kick. And why not start it there? 11. All right, Matt. Here it is. I'm actually going to change it up, but not too much. So I'm going to give it a 10. Ooh. Oh, 10. So what only hell? because my palate, I just love the hoppiness. And I would want it to just, me personally, want it to be just a little, a bit little more. I'm giving it double digits here, guys. So yeah, <laughs> that is. 10 out of 12. It's pretty That's... darn good. Once everyone is given a number, they add them up and find the average, which becomes the official drink and thinking rating for that particular beer. Let's see what rating Funky Bo got. All right, Ryan, right. what's the math? That's, 11, that's 11, hard, Matt. 11, I, think it's, I think it's 10.75. 10.75 10. for Funky Bo. I, I couldn't just make it simple. I know. How did that? You had to make me think. No, that's cool. Whatever. You drank first. I did drink first, so it's okay. Now that we've reviewed the beer, I'm heading down to Funky Bo Brewing to meet father and son team Paul and Abraham Lorraine to learn about their tasty main beers. All right, you must be Abraham. I am Abraham. My man, Matt. Kellerman, nice to meet you. Thanks for having me out. Yeah, man. no problem. Ooh, you guys are getting down to business in here. We are. We're uh, mashing in right now. Yeah. So this is your shop. This is where it happens. This is it. This is uh, where we spend most of our life. This is right here. Just making beer. With a background in microbiology, Abraham knew a thing or two about brewing before he and his dad started the brewery in 2013. But the brewery almost didn't happen because they hadn't talked with each other for over seven years. Little did they know that beer was going to bring them together. I went off, did my own thing, went to college. He was growing his farm to be bigger and more successful. We were both doing good things. Awesome. The only thing that was missing was that link between him and I. Mm -hmm. And so I sent him a text message that we should get together and we came up with a date. And I didn't know how it was gonna go, you know? It's like been a while. So <laughs> we sat down awesome. at a bar, we had a beer and we just kind of took it from there. Soon after their talk, Paul got Abraham a homebrew kit so they could start brewing beer together, which they did for a couple of years in a garage on Paul's farm, Sunset Farm Organics. Then one day he was like, I have another idea. And I'm like, what, we're gonna buy another homebrew kit? And he's like, no, a brewery. <laughs> Your dad is awesome. He is awesome. he is awesome, he is awesome. Since then, Paul has helped Abraham get the brewery up and running in a garage on his farm. Paul handles the business and marketing side of things, so Abraham can focus on doing what he does best, brewing up unique and flavorful beers. Since it's the middle of winter in Maine, Abraham and his crew are brewing up a classic winter beer, a stout, but this one has a bit of a twist. They're going to town, they're mashing in, we got a stout going. The stout, nice, yeah, so excellent. it's gonna be an oatmeal vanilla milk stout. Oatmeal vanilla milk stout. Yeah. Right. That, that sounds. It could be dessert beer. Or it could be just an everyday stout. You, know, you can just drink way. whenever you want. Right, it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, I know you get your crew, but do you, do you need a hand? Yeah, we want to put some grain and some Let's hot do this. water. I want, I want to make some beer, brother. <laughs> Let's do this. Because their brewery is so small, they have to do everything by hand, including adding malt to the mash tun. So this is old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned way. All right. So we'll just throw in grain in hot water. Yeah. Just throw um, grain in hot water. So yeah. you do is you just put you know just put that over your shoulder. Most breweries have special machines that add grain to the mash tun, but not here. Brewing beer at Funky Bow requires many hands and a lot of hard work. There you go, and now you can just kind of let it pour in going back and forth and he'll stir it around. It's very soothing, this motion. <laughs> so what am I pouring in here? So this is a mixture, probably, or it just might be pale malt. Uh, that's the base malt for the beer. It has, gives a lot, a lot of sugars uh, for the yeast to munch on. While Abraham is the brewmaster, Donovan is his right-hand man and head brewer. Together, they come up with new beer ideas that eventually become staples at the brewery. You, know, you gotta have like a brainstorming session. Yeah, it's like you know, we'll spend a month just drinking beer and talking about recipes. You know, so it's a it's a terrible life, but you know, someone's gonna. <laughs> Eddie, do you it. look miserable. You look so <laughs> unhappy in here. I tell you. Now that I've poured some grain in, I'm getting out of the way to let the professionals finish their stout. So, we're gonna let things boil here a little bit. While you're doing that, I think. I I'm gonna go out and I'd love to tour, man. I'd love to check out the farm. You guys yeah, do awesome, a lot of I different think. things here than just brewing beer. You're kind of a multifaceted organization. We are farm disabled. I'd love to check it out. Yep. Meet your pops. Maybe yeah. You give me a tour. Hell yeah. Let's do it, man. All right, cool. Thanks, brother. All right, yeah. let's roll. Coming up, I meet Abraham's father and co-owner of Funky Bow Brewing, Paul Lorraine, and check out their 23-acre organic farm. Wow. We got a bunch of stuff going on in here. Then we sit down and sample some Funky Bow beer. Earlier, you know, this month gave a, a 10 rating out of now 12. What the fuck? And later, we're coming to Growler Night at the brewery. Let's break the news. Today. Breaking news here. But first, it's time for another round.
The Maine Brew Bus, Maine's original brewery tour company, is a fun and unique way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Hop on board and experience our all-inclusive tours of Maine craft breweries, distilleries, wineries, meaderies, and even coffee roasters. Leave the driving to us while you enjoy behind-the-scenes tours, local snacks, trivia, and of course, beer. Voted number one activity in Portland, Maine on TripAdvisor, the Maine Brew Bus is the best way to visit craft breweries in Maine. Check out our schedule and book your tickets now at themainebrewbus.com. The Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of Local Brew TV, driving you to drink local. You have a marketing message that needs to reach your customers. You think a video is a good idea, but you need some help. You need somebody that can turn your idea into an engaging and effective marketing tool. Hi, I'm Nate Bowman. I've been working in video production for over 13 years, creating high quality video content for businesses like yours. I've helped them produce great engaging videos that have delivered the right results with the right message on time and on budget. So contact me today. You can reach me at this phone number, this email address, or this website. Today I'm at Funky Bow Brewing in Lyman, Maine, where I've met co-owner and brewmaster Abraham Lorraine and helped him brew a batch of beer. Now I'm heading outside to meet his father and co-owner of Funky Bow, Paul Lorraine, to learn about his organic farm where he grows salad greens all winter long. You must be Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Matt. Nice to meet you, nice my to man. Meet you. So I have seen your amazing, incredible brewery. I, I helped out a little bit. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be on the payroll here, maybe just for today. No. Okay. So I'm not gonna be. Um, <laughs> but there is a lot more to offer here at this amazing place that is Funky Bow? A lot more. Can, can we check it out? Most of it. <laughs> okay. I like this. So we have the brewery. What else you guys got going on here? Greens. Greens, okay. Can I see it? Yeah. Paul leads us behind the brewery to his farm, where there are nine greenhouses actively growing organic salad greens on this cold winter day. On our way over, I noticed something interesting. Funky Bow Lane. How did that name come to be? Eight years ago. I built a road up through the woods, and it goes up over the hill and comes out behind the greenhouses on the other side of the farm. Okay. And we built that to ride our horses on. So a friend of mine comes over one day, we're having a beer, and we're walking across the road, and we get down to here and he lights up a joint. Okay. And we're standing here looking and admiring the road, and he goes, what are you going to call this bad boy? I said, I don't know. He goes, well, we're going to have to think of something. He goes, how's your fiddle lessons going? I said, great, I'm learning this funky bow shit. You know, slurs, <laughs> they call them. So the next day he comes back, we're smoking another joint, drinking another beer. <laughs> and I look at him and I said, how about if we call this funky bow lane? And he goes, great idea. So I went and had the sign made and funky bow lane's been there for eight years. I love it. And then when you started making some beer, you said, we got a name. Yep. All right, guys, well, let's go check out the farm. Let's huh? do it. Sunset Farm Organics, let's do it. The Swiss chard is waiting. Swiss chard, I like that. So this is it, huh? This is, wow. We got a bunch of stuff going on in here. Now, wait a minute, Paul. Now, clearly, from the uh, copious amounts of snow out there, this is the middle of winter, yeah. and yet there's tons of greens. fresh growing greens. You said, you know what? I just want to grow greens all year round. Well, you know, my wife wanted me to get a job one day. She's off to Portland to go to work. And I'm in the hot tub drinking coffee and watching Katie Couric. Of course. So she says, you know, you can get your ass out of that hot tub and get a job. You can teach school, you can work in a restaurant, you can do something. Okay. And I, I said to my wife, this is my plan. I said, can't you see it out there? She goes, no, I can't. And this is just what I need in my life right now is a 50-year-old hippie growing lettuce in the backyard in the middle of the winter. And here we are. And here we are. 16 you, you, years later. Well, you seem like a pretty happy guy. Oh, I got it going. <laughs> I love it. You know, and my son's with me every day. I try to hide in the brewery. I, I see know, that. I I could, yeah, you, you can incognito. <laughs> well, I see you got some more buildings around here. Can we check those out? Yeah, let's go check right. out back. Sweet. We make our way to the back of the farm to check out another one of their greenhouses. So where to next? To the next greenhouse. To the next greenhouse. All right. And then this the one. other brewery. What is another brewery? We have a distillery <laughs> out here. <laughs> Under one of the greenhouses. On our way over, Paul has a little surprise for me and the crew. Tell me when you're running. We're always running. This is happening. What, we're gonna move? <laughs> Funky Bob. <laughs> After regaining my composure, Paul brings us to a greenhouse called Mozart. Because of his love for music, all the greenhouses are named after famous composers. Come on in here, guys. All right, this is uh, this is Mozart, huh? Mozart. All right. We're loaded up in here. We grow about 10 to 12 different varieties, like this kale. This is Tuscan kale. So 
Can I can I try some of this? Oh yeah, munch it hard. Munch it hard. And you can see the cute little flower coming out there. Yeah, right here. Pick that. In the spring, that will they'll all start flowering, and the restaurants really dig that. Dude, this is legit. Oh yeah. You just hang out here with a beer, and you know, pick from the ground, and you're good. Oh. You see the patio back there? Years ago, when I used to have time, I would come out here on Sunday afternoon and drink beer and smoke weed, and I'd have a Shays Lounge. Now I have no time, so <laughs> the patio is slowly becoming non-existent. We'll make some time. Thank you, son. You guys have no projects on the, on the, on the horizon. Yeah. Let's make time. I can see you and I out here. Just sitting here. <laughs> Drinking. Absolutely. Well, well, speaking about drinking your beer, is that something maybe I could do today? Oh, yeah. We're going to get you hammered before you leave. Because <laughs> I understand <laughs> okay. you have a DD. <laughs> That's true. Yes, I do. <laughs> let's do this. All right. Well, All right. Let's, let's, go, let's go drink some of your beer, man. We head to a greenhouse that Paul has converted into a tasting room. This is the same place they hold Growler Night, which I'll be coming back to to check out later. But for now, we sit down to sample some Funky Bow beer. Look at this. This is good. This, this, is, glass. this is a setup right here. Lucky we got this. The brewers are in there drinking it all. <laughs> so that's, that's not a normal brew day? No. No, okay. We so, had yeah. to put the hammer down on that. All right. So what do we got here, guys? Beer. Um, so you have two kinds, but obviously have a little bit of We have about 11 it. total in the brewery, but since we sell out every week, these are the two that we have. It's not a bad problem to have. I ain't waiting. Um, <laughs> you can drink. You just tell So me. this ah. is our, so why don't you try the, this is the uh, uh, SoFolk and Hoppy. It's actually, this is our keg conditioned version. So we so actually. This is the keg conditioned. Naturally conditioned in the keg. No so SoFolk and Hoppy, which I earlier, you know, this month gave a, a 10 rating out of now 12. What the fuck? Hey, that was a very good rating out of 12. I didn't want to follow the now path. Everybody gave us 11 and you show up, you've been here, you've sucked down our beer and you gave us a fucking 10. I'm actually going to change it up, but not too much. So I'm going to give it a 10. Ooh. Oh, so what? I'm a leader, not a follower, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the right to amend that. that well, rating. you can. You can no, it's not right. This, this, this is the one I tried, though, right? No, this no. is the cake condition. Okay. It's a little hoppier than the other one. It's All right, a little let's more do dry this. Hop. Let's see if it makes me happy. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I like that. I like that. I like the sound. This of is it. amazing. Isn't it? Tell me why why the what the keg condition does differently from the one so I tried what on we do uh, is drinking thinking. In our regular <sighs> so folk and oppy, we do dry hop it, but not for as long. So you only get a certain essence of the dry hop. With the keg condition, it's actually sitting for a week or two with the hop. So you oh, get a lot yeah, more this is really hoppy. Simcoe juicy flavor and aroma, which comes out nice. Oh, this is lovely. I love hoppy beers and this. People this, do this like the other one, and they this like this good. one. They're both awesome. Cheers. Man. Let's drink. This is kind of dangerous. I could drink a lot of these. Well, we got We're a counting on it. This is 11.7. 11.7. Okay. Let's, that's all my right. call. All that's right. my call. All right. You heard 11.7. 11.7. 11, 7. 11, 7. I'm sorry, drinking thinking boys. It's better than 7.11. You got to try this. We got to get the drinking thinking down here so they can reevaluate. I agree. I don't know if you want the, you guys and the th drinking thinking boys together. That might be trouble. We probably should have had the, the <laughs> coffee porter first because this one's a little hoppier and it kind of wrecks your palate. It's not really a porter. It's porter-esque. It's porter -esque. No, it's a porter. We invented a, a porter. No, it's not a porter. What do you mean you invented a porter? We didn't go traditional malt bill. But okay. we created a malt bill that tastes very similar to a porter and has a lot of the same aspects of a porter, and then we added coffee to it. And it's really well balanced. So is, the coffee doesn't just say coffee. It's strong and dark, has a coffee fizz, and it is around 8.3%. Mm. And you can feel it all over your tongue, which is cool. It makes your mouth feel good. Wow, that is amazing. It's like I, I actually, I'm actually not a fan of coffee porters as a rule yeah. because I think the coffee overpowers the beer and I want to drink the beer. This is Almost. a great porter that just happens to also have a, a cool a hint coffee on essence. Coffee, yeah. Absolutely. We cold brewed the coffee in there, meaning we just oh, soaked you cold it at cold temperatures. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. So cheers to coffee porter. Cheers, coffee cheers porter. to coffee porter. So you're making, me, you're making people, me a believer, man. We have a lot of people say we don't like certain beers, and then they drink ours, and they're buying ours. No, like, I don't like amazing. stouts, but they drink ours. I don't like IPAs. And maybe it's just because we're so funky. Well, guys, thank you seriously again. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Stop playing. Nice I'm going to hit the road. You know, I saw uh, there's a couple uh, snow machines out there. I might just, you know. Why don't you take one home with you? And I, love, On and funky I loved you before. That's the kind of guys we All are. All right, I'm out of here, guys. You know what? You guys keep making this this funky stuff. And I'll see you guys on the flip side. Coming up, I head back to the brewery for growling. Let's break the news. 
breaking news here. And then I'm visiting one of Portland's newest beer bars, the Little Tap House. It's just about really fresh food and also that relationship with the craft beer industry, which is amazing. But first, it's time for another round. Brewtees has the best craft beer shirts and apparel available. Our designs feature some of your favorite breweries in Maine, the U.S., and around the world. We have rare, hard to find vintage beer and label designs dating back to the 1800s, and original craft beer designs for all you hop heads and beer lovers. Head on over to Brewtees.com to find the best craft brew apparel available. Since 1988, we've been making it happen right here in Portland, Maine. Brewtees, setting the bar in craft apparel. I'm back at Funky Bow Brewing to check out Growler Night, which happens every Friday at the brewery. Everyone is invited to stop by, grab a beer, eat some food, and hang out by the bonfire. Tonight, they have a live bluegrass band playing some funky music and delicious barbecue from South Barbecue in Portland. And the coolest part of Growler Night? It's held in a heated greenhouse that they've converted into a warm space for drinking and socializing, complete with picnic tables and a place to purchase or refill growlers of Funky Bow beer. On the night I'm here, Paul and Abraham have a big announcement they want to make. Abraham, let's break the news. Today, breaking news here. Today, at 11.30, 11.31, we signed a contract with Pine State Distributors to take over our brand as of June 1st. Nice. So fun. Paul and Abraham plan to expand their brewery to increase production by 10 times its current level. They'll be distributing all that beer in 12 ounce cans, which will be available statewide this summer. Since filming of this episode began, they have already broken ground on their new facility, which will be located directly behind the garage they currently brew in. I have to say something, we couldn't be in this business. We couldn't be in this business. We couldn't be in this oh, Donovan, we couldn't be in this business without you. Come here. This oh, yeah. guy right here works his ass off. And this guy builds all the wonderful tanks that we're using for the expansion. So awesome, I mean this man. business is cheers, this business is cheers. contingent on these people. All he yeah. Yeah. Major expansion. And you're all hanging yeah. out here on Growler Night. I love this. Thank you. Now that my time at Funky Bow is done, I'm heading to the little tap house in Portland to eat some delicious food and drink some Funky Bow beer with the locals. The Funky Bow, Rally Night, Little Tap House. Established by Lee Goya in 2013, with the help of her daughter, Brianna, Little Tap House sits in a small rustic space in Portland's West End. With an ever-changing beer list and a focus on fresh, organic, and locally sourced food, Little Tap House is hard to beat. Our thought was to develop a place that's neighborhoody but also has instant access to brewers, breweries, and local farmers. Instant access, they're right there, they just walk by us. No it's amazing. What's cool about this is that you never know who's going to walk through the door Absolutely. and who's going to buy you a beer because you may be sitting there ordering a beer and it's the brewer's beer and it's like, I got that one. That's awesome. Yeah. When Lee says they're focused on local, she really means it. Along with Funky Bow Beer, Little Tap House also serves organic salad greens from Paul's Farm, providing an honest farm-to-table experience for customers. So you guys are really supporting this like farm-to-table, farm-to-glass movement. And to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about the whole organic farm food movement before we started. I read a lot about it. I always like fresh produce. I love to cook. But we went to the Maine Organic Farmers Growers Association that first summer we were open, and I met North Star Farm and some other farms, and they were like, we'll bring things. Like, tell us what you need. So we really developed our menu according to what people brought us and what we thought was really going to be comfortable gastro cob food that would pair well with the beer. All the food at Little Tap House is delicious, but their organic beef burger really stands out from the crowd. It's so good, in fact, that it was voted best pub-style burger in 2013 by Eater Maine. And it's even more delicious when paired with one of Funky Bo's beers, which are almost always on tap. Speaking of which, I notice Abraham is drinking a beer not listed on the menu. I head over to check it out. What are you drinking? Uh, this is actually our aged red. It's been, uh, we put black cherries and uh, oak, uh, brandied oak, and we aged it for about two months. Black cherries and oak yep. in your red. Right. And it, it's a beautiful beer. I mean, can I drink it? Uh, sure. <laughs> no, you can drink it. We, we hung out. It's fine. Yeah, the beer's cool. 
Oh, that's solid. That is really solid. That's solid. You, don't you see that? that? You see how red that is? <laughs> you can see it's red. It's red. Trust me. It's awesome. Thanks, man. I'm drinking the Dobro. Oh, yeah. And what's the Dobro? What's, what's that connection? So what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the Dobro. It's actually kind of his recipe. It's a double brown. Double brown. Double brown. It's a uh, malty, hoppy, nice dried fruit flavors. Just a beautiful, beautiful beer. It's a lovely well, beer. It's a lovely beer, man. Thank it's a lovely you. beer. Cheers awesome. to everything. It's awesome. Cheers to everything. Ladies, can we get a cheers? Here it just goes up. Just shows up. Paul and Abraham. I don't know how you couldn't have a special relationship with Paul or Abraham. It's so, yeah. kind of cool because we both opened at the same time. Oh, cool. So our first review, which was highly favorable, I nice. didn't know what kind of beer I was buying. I'm like, yeah, I know we have to have an Allagash and all the big heavy hitters, but they approached us in the beginning. I'm like, Funky Bow, yeah. sure, bring it in. So the reviewer hit upon the Funky Bow right away That's in our awesome. first review. And since then, both of us have really taken off, and I think it's because we both have the same dedication to quality Absolutely. and family and community. I so, love that. I, a couple of family stories here. Yeah, That's fantastic. Awesome. How is it working with your mom? It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, we have a pretty special relationship. I can see that. Yeah. And it's a fun business to be in, and you just meet so many amazing people. And you know, the West End neighborhood is just Absolutely. incredible. Absolutely. Everybody that comes in. No, so I think you guys have put together lucky. a really wonderful, wonderful combination. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much thank for having you. me out. This is a very beautiful cheers. Cheers, cheers. Absolutely. I look forward to many nights here. Okay, yes. Thank, thank you so much. Thank Thanks you, for coming in. Outliers Eatery is Maine's premier restaurant for fresh, locally sourced dishes and wholesome, satisfying cuisine. Our dinner menu changes regularly and is updated with seasonal favorites that are sure to please. We offer a variety of tasty and refreshing cocktails, along with an extensive wine list that will appeal to even the most discerning of palates. Craft beer fans will love our hand-picked selection of local microbrews, Belgians, and favorites from around the country. Visit us online at outliereatery.com. Outliers Eatery, casual elegance to find in Portland's West End. Maine is a special place for craft beer. There's so many great breweries, pubs, and people involved in the craft beer scene up here. Like the boys of Drinkin' Thinkin', who I was lucky enough to hang out with and talk beer. But well, we had the same philosophy. There's plenty of great beer out there. Let's spread the word. You know, let's That's, educate. Let's, let's drink it all. Let's drink it as much as <laughs> you have to. I mean, yeah. As official, you know, reviewers of beer, right? Yeah. You have to. Yeah, we're professionals. It's true. With so many breweries in the state, it can be hard for one to stand out from the crowd. But Funky Bow Brewing isn't worried about that. They're brewing up some of the funkiest beers around and they're doing it to the beat of their own drum. Today, I learned the story behind their unique brewery from the brewmaster himself, Abraham Lorraine. We produce really challenging beers, so we kind of tweak the style. And it challenges the drinker to think about what's going on inside their mouth. A lot of our beers are higher alcohol, gotcha. so they're very complex, and that's what we like out of the beer. But the brewery is only half the story. Funky Bow offers up a complete farm-to-table experience, selling their organic salad greens at the same places they sell their beer. I got to tour the farm firsthand with co-founder Paul Lorraine and his son. You can take a bunch of these leaves and you put them on a nice little plate with some uh, main crab salad. I'm talking, yeah. Dude, this is legit. Oh yeah. And I got to be part of Funky Bow's history when Paul and Abraham announced their big expansion at Growler Night. Today, we signed a contract with Pine State Distributors to take over our brand as of June 1st. Nice. Aye, so fun. Aye. Aye. What would all this beer be good for if there aren't funky places to sit down and enjoy it? I got to chat with Lee Goyette, the owner of an exciting new craft beer bar, Little Tap House in Portland, and learn about her commitment not only to beers like Funky Bow, but also to the farm to table movement. It's just about really fresh food and also that relationship with the craft beer industry, which is amazing. But also that relationship with local farms and people that are bringing really great products into the area. Yes, it was a day of fun, great people, and some very funky craft beer from one of Maine's best microbreweries, Funky Bow Brewing. Local Brew is sponsored by the Maine Brew Bus, the official ride of local brew.
driving you to drink local since 2012. Brewtees.com, setting the bar in craft beer apparel since 1990, right here in Portland, Maine. Outliers Eatery, serving fine craft beer and fresh locally sourced dishes daily on the outskirts of Portland's West End. This you is guys. all because of that 10.75 rating. <laughs> 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 It was a 7.5. No, it was not a 7. It was 11. No, it was a 10. It was a 10. How do you even rate beer? Who's been sampling greens? Joe. You can Joe Bobble. Yee-hoo! All right, I'm getting in here. Where am I getting? You're going to get right here? I'm going to lose between two thighs right, here, man. Right. Come on, let's so do yeah. this. Woo! Get your skinny little ass over here. Whoa, whoa! Hey now. Hey now. Whoa! What is it? That's the Zuna. The Zuna? Eat the whole thing, brother. We should use them in the beer. Hey, you should make them a Zuna beer. Wow, oh, kind of exotic. You could buy these for your girlfriend and she's liking you to eat them. Right. Panning up for this man. Scott, how's it going? What's happening? Good to see you. <laughs>